Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the latest news, the most important news of the day. With the aim of regulating mobility in the Department Archipelago, developing an activity for renewal of driver's licenses, here is the note. The Departmental Mobility Secretariat is developing a campaign for the renewal of driver licenses for people who have this document and is currently expired. We want to invite all drivers of the island who already have an expired national driver's license to come to our offices located on the second floor of the Coral Palace to make the endorsement process, which means that people who have expired documents can renew it. Within the requirements to be able to renew these licenses is first, that the city Senate is in good standing regarding the issue of traffic fines. Second, present a medical examination from the IPS endorsed by the Secretariat of Health, and third, to pay a printing fee of the document that may be claimed in the Mobility Secretariat. On the other hand, this office indicated that it is working to start the processes of issuing first-time licenses in the island. For the issuance of first-time licenses, we have a group of people who took a course more than a year ago, and the idea is that the Vice Minister evaluates the conditions of these instructors who are certified but do not have experience, so that they can certify them and can evaluate us who already have driving instructors on the island. We believe that in a few months we will be able to start issuing first-time licenses whenever we get these instructors certified by the Ministry of Transportation. With this initiative, the departmental government seeks to regulate mobility on the island through the issuance of driver's licenses. And it's inevitable not to talk about the increase of COVID cases in the department. The contagion more and more are registered every day in San Andreas and Old Providence. For this reason, the Chamber of Commerce will start a campaign in different commercial establishments to reinforce biosecurity measures. In view of the new increase of COVID cases that have been registered in the Archipelago Department, the Chamber of Commerce is committed to remembering the measures and inviting commercial establishments to comply with them through the campaign. This was announced by Jennifer Yepes, Executive President of the Chamber of Commerce. We are also starting right now uh, visiting all the uh, establishments, all the commerce that we have. We're in, in association with um, Secretaria de Salud. We're going to visit and make a small campaign that has um, an objective to remember everyone that we all have to work together to um, prevent the situation that we're passing through. Uh, is, is, is now is the moment that we have to work together, commerce and all the islanders, to um, reduce the number of positive cases. The invitation from Yepes is to take care of ourselves and to manage the biosecurity protocols because the increase of contagion today is in our hands. And taking into account that more than 6,000 million pesos have been invested in the Sunrise Park and it is still not ready for the use of the community, the government of the archipelago presented the draft ordinance number 008 to the departmental assembly, which is being reviewed by, this, by them since early this morning. An inspection visit was made to the Sunrise Park with the Secretaries of Infrastructure, Finance and Sport to verify the state of the park, taking into account the draft ordinance that the departmental government presented to the Archipelago's Assembly in order to have the power to grant the property in concession. Citamos al Secretario de Infraestructura, citamos al Secretario de Hacienda. We summoned the Secretary of Infrastructure, Finance and the Secretary of Sports with the objective of making an inspection visit which was carried out yesterday with them to see what the condition of the park is in. This inspection showed us that currently the largest pool in the park has a tile in bad condition so the pool has to be repaired. Also, a stand where the events were held should be rebuilt completely and the pumps are in bad condition. On the other hand, Deputy Nicolas Gallardo gave his talk on this subject. Para nadie es un secreto que el parque se encuentra en condiciones. It is no secret that the park is in a deteriorated condition. The idea is to bring this park back to life and make it look its best again. That is why the department made the effort to pass an ordinance to move it forward. The Islas News will be attentive to what happens with the draft ordinance presented to the departmental government, which is being debated in the departmental assembly. 
For the 2020 and 2023 period, the public hearing of the Bernbrightel Corporation for the Sustainable Development of Archipelago Coralina will be held where the director of the entity will make the respective accountability report presenting the level of progress in the fulfillment of this institutional action plan to be held tomorrow, April 23rd, in the Wildwinds and Peterson Bend Auditorium. However, it will only be available for the community via streaming. Los invito cordial. I want to cordially invite you to participate in the public hearing accountability report of the Coralina Environmental Authority for the year 2020, which will be held on April 23rd at 8.30 a.m. through Facebook Live on the Coralina and the Seaflower Biosphere Reserve account. This presentation will be made in order to show the status of the level of progress in the fulfillment of the institutional action plan for the period 2020-2023 of the cooperation with respect to the immediate preceding period. It is important to highlight that the management report will be available for consultation at the main campus in the General Secretary's office and on the web page of the Coralina Corporation www.coralina.gov.co. Persons wishing to participate in the public hearing must register at the General Secretary's office of the corporation or by email at audienciapublica at coralina.gov.co. Additionally, the hearing will be available for Raisal community on Friday 23 from 2.30 p.m. in English and Creole in the auditorium of the CS Government's Auditorium in Shingle Hill. And as part of the celebration of the Children's Month, numerous entities have joined to provide recreational spaces for the children of our department. Good evening, Lisa and all the TV viewers. I say hello from here, from the town of the island, because we want to remember all the communities. So right now, we're in on April, the month of the children, and specifically this Saturday, the 24th, we want to celebrate the Day of the Children. That's why the National Police of our Department, with the departmental government, want to invite all of to a special activity that they have for the children of our island. In alliance with the government, on Saturday the 24th from 9 a.m., we will be at the play center located in the sector of Seri Bay. We will carry out activities with all the protocols in light of Children's Day. The idea is that our children participate and that their families accompany us in order to offer a moment of recreation to them. It is important to mention that everybody who wants to assist to this event have to have all the biosecurity protocols and to remember that we have to take care of our children. And remember that this pandemic is not over yet. This is all the information I report from here, from the town of the island. Continue listening to studio. And we are back with all the sport news of our department. <laughs> Hello, here are the best sports of the island. With a view to his participation of the Dominoes Tournament to be celebrated in the month of June, the selection of San Andres is already preparing. The full Colombia Domino Foundation will be celebrating its 10th anniversary. That is why it has organized a national domino tournament in which the delegation of San Andres will be participating. This team is already preparing themselves, training with the new international rules of the sport to achieve a great representation of the archipelago department. Donovan O'Neill tell us more about this. A few months back, we received an invitation from the foundation uh, of uh, Fundación uh, Domino Full Colombia. Uh, we are this year, they are celebrating the 10 years of foundation. So uh, we want to go to this tournament which is we'll celebrate in the month of June. And we are practicing to perfectionize uh, the different rules and regulations that the, the tournament then play with. Because in this tournament, any mistake that you make, then penalize you. So we want to, to, to be perfect in, in, in our playing so that we can make a, a good paper in this tournament. It was reaffirmed by Miguel Chaverra. We are preparing ourselves by perfecting the domino rules in order to better equipped for the international tournaments, which are coming up soon. Preparing themselves beforehand for this sport is very important to achieve the goal and a good representation of the department. Now we continue with the weather forecast. The weather forecast for today, 22nd of April, in the coastal area of the archipelago, the sky is mainly sunny. 
Temperature is 30 degrees Celsius with winds from the northeast direction with intensities of 24 km per hour. Humidity forecast is 67% and probability of precipitation is of 9%.